This week on the Push Willows podcast, we go on as many tangents as possible. Also, we talk about breaking through plateaus for beginner, intermediate, and advanced lifters. Three, two, one. I've got a new LinkedIn friend. Hey guys, welcome to the Push Pull Legs podcast with myself, Dami. And me, Tom Hall. What's going on, bro? Yeah, good man. I'm jealous of your LinkedIn friend. No, no. LinkedIn really is jealous. the place to be, apparently. I That's just don't go on LinkedIn. It's ever. So It's so flirty. It's unreal. A little bit of, uh, oh, you have to be in a suit. Oh, yeah. Brill. It's great. <laughs> the social media. Who the fuck uses LinkedIn? No idea what's going on there. Um, I don't get it. I don't understand. I get a lot of, I got them. I get a lot of DMs in uh, LinkedIn. Very different to the ones you get in it on Instagram. Um, I bet they are. <laughs> I, I just seem to be hit on Facebook at the moment all the time for people that want to make me have a seven-figure business, online business, and they can do it in thirty days. Apparently, thirty days. I, I just like, like all the like, so many of them that are just like ridiculous, just ridiculous claims, and some of the videos are just awful. I'm just like, oh my god, people fall for this shit. But hmm. people do. Well, <coughs> didn't me. you didn't you just sign up? You did, didn't you? Well, of course I signed up. Yeah, I paid yeah, for it. Yeah, well, I mean, like, I'm ready to ready to turn seven figure footprint. Mate. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. So it is uh, officially a one year anniversary, right? Not of me and you. We're, we're no. worried about that. Right. Yeah, biceps and banter. Yeah, it's been going a, a year. Well, we left Team Box a year ago. So yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so yeah, officially, it, um, it, yeah, it happened. yeah. It's uh, it's interesting. It's been uh, it's been a good year, but um, yeah, we just recorded our. Our journey. The so first it's been year a good year Mike. because you're not in Team Box, or a good year because you're with Mike. Uh, probably both. Both, I guess. Yeah. Probably, I suppose, yeah. Probably one both. led to the other. One led to the other. So kind of one, kind of one like the other, can you? Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's been good. It's been a fun year. Um, I can't even believe it's only been a year actually, which is really odd when you think back as to how far we've come. Yeah, we've done we've done nothing with our time really. <laughs> wasted, wasted, wasted it, if anything. Absolutely wasted it. Uh, yeah. yeah, we just filmed uh, a video that's going to go out next Tuesday that we are very very excited about. P- possibly our funniest video we've done yet, or we think it is. That doesn't say a lot, does it? That, um, no, 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 no. Just. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, we 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 enjoyed putting that one together. Um, th- the first edit's been put together, um, so yeah, we'll see what happens um, with the uh, with the final one on Tuesday. But yeah, other than that, mate, nothing crazy is going on in my world. How about you? Came back to work, didn't I? Yeah, you started back in your I job. Think, I, I think you actually, actually go to work. Um, so, right. annoyingly. So I'll be uh, integrating into onboarding for the Islington branch of Third Space. Uh, because, unfortunately, I was meant to be there last week. Uh, but I had to go see Dan. So, yeah. Um, After, to be fair, I didn't really right. well, To be fair, you just I came. Was, I was there Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That was a long time, wasn't it? Long, long time. Mate. You've <laughs> got some burgers to review. Uh, very true. I also left my shoes. Um, which yeah, I didn't get them back. <laughs> it was so dumb. I was like, I didn't. I only. I brought like I bought three pairs of shoes. One of which were flip flops. What we were wearing most of the time, right? Because it was yeah. Apps. Can we just review the weather on that Thursday? I'm sorry. I mean, we Had were baking. The whole time, weren't we? Like, even the, the Tuesday and the, the Wednesday yeah. were like 30 plus. We were struggling walking around flip flops the whole time. And really? I don't really walk around in flip flops very much. So, like, the, between my toes, as it was, getting a bit like, ugh, a, yeah. bit, a bit sore. And, uh, yeah. So, so I, I drove back. I didn't drive my flip flops. Dan does. Bad man. And, no, uh, you take them off. You drive barefoot. All right. I drove barefoot. Yeah. Um, yeah. So drive, <laughs> drive my flip flops. Obviously, I went, I, when I drove back, Obviously, I was like, oh, I've got everything. Left my shoes, brilliant, good work. And then I, I was going out on the Thursday evening, but I was coming back to London, but I wasn't going to my flat. And obviously, I had the palaver. I had to go buy some shoes because I, I literally only had flip flops with me. I was like, brilliant. Um, would have been great. I mean, go for some food, go out, yeah, drinks, flip flops, casual. Mm. Mm. Good work. <laughs> <laughs> no, I went and bought some shoes. Fun. Um, it was a bit daft. But yeah, what was it? Thirty-eight points, something. I think it was thirty-eight point seven. Didn't it break a record? Seven. I mean, I'm sorry. In London, it is a different kind of hot than like yeah. being there somewhere else. It's just, blech. 
absolutely awful. Um, I went and got my hair cut, and uh, it turned into a wet cut. No fault of so. Um, just that um, amount of sweat. Not that a cool <laughs> was not a cool absolutely look. vile. And the hairdressers didn't have aircon, so I was just like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Hairdressers, barbers, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah. <laughs> not a good look, mate. It's very, uh, very, 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 very sweaty. Oh. Uh, Ugh. Mate, I feel for that barber who happened to I do know, that. that barber. Yeah. Having to even touch me is uh, the thing, right? Mm, I just don't. I just don't. I mean, nah, nah. Wouldn't be do. Wouldn't be the right job. I wouldn't want to do that job in the summer. No, sorry, definitely not. A bit, a bit bad. Um, but yeah, so back at work. It's really um, weird though. I tell you something interesting about barbers, right? So we've got barbers that just open up in Bath, okay. right? Because we're on the subject, I just want to talk about it. Right, really, yeah. really, really random. It's the barbers um, we walk past a few times. Yeah, we walked past a few. We talked about walked past it a few times, right? Now my hair and my beard is in drastic, drastic need of being whoa, cut. Whoa, right? whoa, 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 is it? Yeah. Yeah? Looks awful, yeah. 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 Yeah, okay. Brill. Right. <laughs> anyway, so I really need to get it cut, right? I must have walked past the place a couple of times over the last few days, and I've had plenty of time to go in there and have it cut. I've got a really weird anxiety about going in there. I don't know what it is. It's not about, like... Is it because you have? No, but I just realised that, like, I'm, I don't... I, do you know what? I, I genuinely can't be arsed with a chit-chat. As bad as that sounds. I, I was like... I can't you know, be- like understand I, I, I just feel a bit like I'm, I can't deal with the social pressure of having to talk to the person <laughs> doing it I want to just go in and have my haircut and walk out and just be yeah. like that's fine that's cool um, but I, I was going to post it on Instagram stories of the day but then I just thought I'd be a bit weird it doesn't really give any co- it's not really anything that anyone can do anything about but I feel like a podcast is a good place to talk about it for some oh, reason because yeah, no, no one can talk back to me about <laughs> it <laughs> I can but I they kind can, of like, understand can't sound weird. Uh, I just because I've not had my, I've never had my hair cut. I remember I was in when I was in London. Um, one of the uh, one of the, the members used to come to our gym a lot. He suggested that I shave it when it, when it was really bad and thinning and all that sort of shit. And everyone was like, "Oh, it looks so good. You should have done this ages ago." Well, oh, brilliant. Cheers. Anyway, he was the first person that did it for me. And after that, obviously, I was like, well, "I can do this myself." And I have to pay thirty, forty quid to go right in London to have someone shave my head. So I've always done it myself for the last like four years. And I don't know why I have this like a little bit of anxiety about going in there. I have no idea why. I don't. I, I, don't, I don't like switching. Hundred percent. I'm. I'm very loyal to like the person. <laughs> it's a guy yeah, called Mario I, I, I who think, like I cuts my I hair. Would... Ever since I've moved like into the Marlebone like area and done that kind of stuff around there, and I was like, "Yep, yeah, cool. He's my lad. I'm gonna go see him." Um, I think I, I would these... be the same. I would be the same. You see, but it's that initial thing of having to have that chit chat hmm. that I imagine. The reason I bring this up. The reason I bring this up is that I imagine that it must be similar for personal training. I, I have this thing of like... A thousand percent it This is. is why I nearly posted about it, because I think it's that whole thing of like, I imagine there's a lot of people maybe who follow us on Instagram. I've had someone message me a couple of times before going, oh, oh, I've wanted to message you for ages, but I've never really thought I could and not really, you know, and it's a bit different with text-based stuff. I get online messages a bit different and all that sort of stuff. But again, it's that whole thing of when I say to someone, yeah, just look, let's pick up the phone, let's have a chat about coaching. And they kind of, uh, they kind of, uh, you kind of feel that they get a little bit of, oh, like the social anxiety of like, oh, well, I listen to you all the time, or like, and you know, they don't think you're a, you're a human. But I would imagine there's a lot of people out there who want to do personal training but are afraid to make that that leap. It's that leap, right? Yeah, that jump. Yeah, weird, isn't it? I mean, I talk I to also, you every day. So if you want to talk to Dan, uh, don't would be my first one. Yeah, if you I mean, really yeah, want to talk to Dan. Yeah. <laughs> don't, get, don't get dragged into conversation with me but I, I remember the first time that I went to basketball like I told you I don't know if I mentioned this before on the podcast I probably have but I'm going to say it again but the first time as an, as an adult short for 30, basketball 30 year old adult I went to uh, like a, a Sunday like scrimmage they're called it just like a practice like, pick, like everyone goes along and they just pick teams and you just play a bit of basketball right yeah. adult, adult league and I remember going and I knew I was in the right place the sports hall was there I could hear everyone in there and I stopped and nearly walked out Hmm. And luckily, I went in, and I'm glad I did because it's great now. And I'm sure my haircut will be the same. I'm sure it would. But isn't it weird how even? I mean, the I, the, the idea and the, the actual having the haircut or your hair after the cut. Well, don't. <laughs> I mean, you can't mess this up. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's not going to make it look any worse. I'm not bothered about the haircut, really. You should it's go just, and get a nice nice beard trim as well. 
Yeah, oh, no, I would. I'd get it all. Yeah, I'd get it all done proper. You know, but I just that's what I mean. I just I, I do it every now and again. I, I don't know if it's because it's a little bit intimate. Maybe I don't know if it's a little bit like a guy's in a razor on my neck. Do you know? Like, and I don't know the guy. <laughs> like, <I> don't, <laughs> like, just like dance yeah, plays. Just like I don't oh know. My what, God, I don't know what it is. It. <laughs> I feel like I would. St- I feel like especially in the heat, is like I just sit there and start sweating. I just be like, oh my god. Um, I would do that. Sorry. Yeah, just very strange. I'm I'm obviously odd and weird, but I don't really give a fuck. No, hundred uh, percent. I think you're normal. Um, but I don't know if that's normal. But I, I just the reason I was going to talk about it was because I think that there's a lot of people with personal training, and online training as well, that have a similar thing. That to you know, it's, it's a, it probably induces some anxiety in people um, when they want to seek help or they want to do that. But it it can seem daunting. Yeah, hundred percent. People use new bits of kit in the, in the gym as well, right? Yeah, people say all the time, "Oh, I was afraid to use new bits of kit," and once I did it and realised that I knew how to use it, I was fine. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I, I I can see your point like of that kind of stuff, but there's there's certain I don't know I don't know whether I've got a kind of a fuck it mentality like mentality because I'll be the person who will be like oh, I will order the weird shit on the on the menu because I've never had it before or like when we went to Watson I was like I, I want to use that because I've never used it before I want to go do that like if I've never yeah but you're it. trained um, so. well thank, thank you Dan wow this sounds amazing not physique <laughs> not, not trained your physique is fucking physique dreadful is definitely not trained mate um, so, but I mean you're trained to use equipment so, you, so for example you knew that was a leg press but I've seen people walk in that gym before and not know that's a leg press what do they start doing to it well, nothing, but they don't. They certainly weren't putting their feet on it, Tom. No, they're not. All right, okay. Think about the position it was in. I think about where you might put your hands. <laughs> yeah, like, like no, but like, like shoulder press. But people don't know this sort of stuff, I you know. So. When they walk in, so I'd walk into the barbers and probably just straddle the chair and be like, well, <laughs> "Does that sound it? I don't know." Um, like, use it yeah, as no, a massage just, tool. It's great. I just mm. thought it was interesting. I still haven't been. Like, I still haven't been. I'm probably going to do my hair tonight because it's a fucking mess. Well, I, I can come down again and hold your hand. Uh, yeah, well, that's what I need. We can go together. I just had my well, cut. I, I so feel like I can get a beard. Like, I feel like what we need to do is we first need to go and get Biscoff ice cream and waitress, and then you can hold my hand and walk me there, and it'll be fine. I mean, it'll be absolutely fine. I mean, we can bring, we can bring Mike. He's got a beard. We can all get beard trims at the same time. There we go. See that. I mean, who also, wouldn't Mike, want to see that? Mike tried the uh, Biscoff ice cream and said it was absolutely incredible, and it is absolutely Amazing. incredible. Can it we is. can we just berate Josh Shilman, a regular guest of this show, who said, "Don't know whether it's better than Oreo." I mean, the man that doesn't deserve taste buds. He's just clearly a moron. Yeah. Cause, no, the, the reason why, i tell you why. The reason he's wrong, the reason he's wrong is that Oreo ice cream isn't as good as Oreos. I'd rather have the Oreos. Yeah, rather have Oreos. Right? Yeah. But I wouldn't rather have Biscoff biscuits than have that Biscoff ice cream. I'd rather have the ice cream. That's how you know that's better. Settled. That's the argument. Yeah, settled. Just done. Yeah. And yet, the day after, he posted that review, went and bought two boxes more. Of course he did. Didn't buy Oreos, well, did he? Yeah, didn't buy Oreos. Yeah. No. Shut Funny up. that, isn't it? Jesus Funny that, isn't it? Yeah. Idiot. Don't, just don't doing follow it for, Josh so I've noticed a surge in this recently as well, right? Idiots. So this has come from the whole like you know the the god tier, top tier, all that sort yeah. of stuff, right? Everyone's doing that. It's engagement baiting. What they do is they post it and they know it's controversial, and they're doing it just to get people to comment and go, no, no, no you rubbish, you're talking rubbish, because obviously it boosts their engagement, all that sort of stuff, and that's why people do it because. I know someone who listens to the show. Well, I think he listens to the show. Tom Phillips. He did it the other day with his carb killers. He put Caramel Chaos number two. Caramel Chaos is the worst carb killer <laughs> you could possibly get. And he did it just for engagement baiting. He just wanted the engagement on his post. And I fell for it. I fell for it. Mate, I, I replied. Hook. I fell for line. it. Um, but that's what people do now, you know. Yeah. People post. They, what they do is they post pictures of marigolds on their feet and say, I mean, you know, well, yeah, they, people like fibers like, these days, you know. And, <laughs> What do they get? Should, they should, get we, take, and, should oh. we take a minute to actually discuss uh, our opinion on Vibrams? Oh, I just don't. I, I mean, I fucking. I would never I be seen wearing. Never it. see them. Like, I all right. Be, my thing. Like, I don't really like feet and other people's feet in fucking toe shoes. Yeah. Like, like I, the I purpose just, of socks and shoes is to hide toes. Nothing yeah. else. Literally nothing I mean, else. Why would you make a thing that's snug like a fucking glove that's like. Bleh, I don't. I don't get how you need to have that much of an increase in your performance. Like, even if it, even if it helps, it helps though, a small like, amount. When I was at uni, like all the physios and the biomechanists were like, "Yeah, these are the best things ever." And then it's come. It's just when I was at uni. I don't know. Eight, ten years ago. How old am I? Yeah, ten You're years old. ago. <laughs> First year of uni was about ten years ago. Jesus Christ. 
I know. I thought, <laughs> you know what I thought all the other day as well because I realised how I was like re- realised how old my car is. I worked out that it's really fucking old. My car, like second half of two thousand and seven. So I was like, fuck, my car's like twelve years old. And then I realised that my car was made the year I went to uni. Jesus. And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> so I never forget my username was SP07 DSM, and it's the 07 that signified our year. And I was like, fuck, I am old. Uh, That's gonna, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> I forgot my tangent. Um, I can't remember what you were going to say. <laughs> Sorry, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the uni, like, so lecturers, like physios, professors, were, were talking about Vibrams 10, yeah. 9, 10 years ago. They were like, yeah, these are awesome, all, all wearing them. And now it's, you've explained to me it's come into the bodybuilding world that now 10 years into this well I think they're like bodybuilders are using them and they're like yeah these are great well I think there's a few people a a few people have have, have basically started wearing them and you know what it's like in bodybuilding as soon as a couple people start wearing them then people like they just copy them Um, that's what happens with us isn't it that's what happens with us well, yeah, that's what happens to us, mate. People yeah. just copy us, right? They, we eat ice creams, they eat ice creams. It's pretty simple. <laughs> um, yeah, we do it for things like that rather than actual bodybuilding or training or nutrition. Training, you know? definitely not training. Um, but <laughs> no, it's, it, I, and again, it's, it's just those people, I suppose, who um, are looking for any any advantage in their pursuit of muscle or, or you know, their right. journey or whatever. And, well, and, you know, fair play if they want to wear them. I, I also think that there's an element of, of bodybuilding or that bodybuilding demographic that actually like to be different because they are yeah. different in, in the very nature of their pursuit of their goal compared to most people in fitness it's a very different goal to what most people have so I think they like to have their own little things that they do which is unique to them and at the moment it just appears to be Vibrams and um, I, like I said I would never I would never buy a pair I would never wear a pair I don't think they're, they're beneficial I don't for me and my goals anyway and more all my clients goals i just don't see how they would be any benefit i'm sure they cost about fucking 200 quid probably i don't know but i'm guess they cost a lot of money they're, they're yeah decent whack aren't they though um, i end up just training in socks most of the time I don't yeah that. i just i just i just don't i just don't really see how using them over like i said training in socks or or bare feet is gonna be um not actual feet of a bear i mean bare feet. <laughs> um you know, but like you can, you can there's, easily, there's like, some, you can easily squat, you can easily squat, leg press, whatever in socks, and, and it'd be fine. Yeah. Like, I get there, and if people don't want to wear Vibrams, there is something called pedestal footwear, which are pretty cool. Um, they're like grippy sock stuff, or you, or I you, just, can, or you can just get, go like, to the uh, the trampoline parks and you get given them. And yeah, nick the socks, yeah, exactly. Socks, yeah. <laughs> but like, I, I don't. I mean, I, I just use squat shoes for squatting, for for stiff legs, for leg press. Like, I don't get. I don't know if it's a grip thing with your toes or, or what. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I don't really. I said I don't really care. I don't. I don't really care either. Like no. they've got their rationale for using them. They're going to carry on using them. Fair play. Let them. Let them do it. Whatever. I just. Don't like I said we just picked up on it the other day. It was just quite funny. Just because, yeah. like you know, because I think like we all do things that are a bit quirky. Like they're a bit weird. Um, you know, to, to bodybuilders, we're weird because we don't care about our muscles or we don't care about our food. Like that's just the way that people think. Like it's fine. <laughs> I care about my food. It's tasty. There's nothing wrong. Yeah, yeah. Tasty. There's nothing wrong with that. And like you said, I'm sure they all laugh at me and they all laugh at you and or you know they laugh at me and Mike or laugh at everyone. But that's fine. Like I don't like you said, it doesn't bother me. as long as everyone can have, laugh at each other's own things that they that they find that they find funny as well. Then it's fine. Um, yeah, I mean, I just <laughs> we're 18 minutes in yet. We haven't started the show yet. So. Um... Oh, mate, people love a ramble. Love a ramble <laughs> but mate. we do, we do. Mate, they wouldn't be this far into the podcast, right? They wouldn't be this far into listening to them if they didn't like their old ramble. <laughs> Ten years. But we've, we've also got to just discuss uh, what was the burger that we had on the on the Wednesday? Because we, we said we were going to go have it on the show, but we recorded well, obviously on the Tuesday night. Well, Nikki, my client Nikki tagged um, me in the top 50 burgers in the UK. Um, like legit list it is and I'll oh, tell you how you. I where's know. the tag I'll tell you how I know it's a legit list Tom right because she made it no because <laughs> Magu Diner was on there number 13 Ooh. but you know three of the places that were on there in the top 10 Tom Black Bear Bleecker and Burger and Beyond was number one really I, I've been saying this for weeks yes. I swear and people have asked was, me like my opinion yes, I'll, and I was I'll, like I'll, I'll tag you in it now I'll, oh. I'll, I'll, I'll find it I feel it so ratified <laughs> Yeah, because like, so I, I got asked it and last I was like, week. Was like, what are the best? I was like, give me a list. What's your top three burgers? And I, I did say Bleecker. I said mm. Dip and Flip, 
and beyond different flip was on there different flip so, was there as well so I, my um, top my top I, three I, I did i did say black bear but i was like maybe not like my top three but burger and beyond mainly because like the burger is amazing but all the other stuff like the poutine is also amazing so it's called um the big seven islands anyway 50 best burgers in england right and there's a couple in bristol that we missed as well by the way oh, really? um so i'll just skip through um a lot of the ones that that uh, we won't have heard of because um, there's some place in like Exeter, Stoke on Trent, Bradford. We're never going to probably go there. Dip and flip, thirty eight. Dip and 38. flip. Thirty eight. See the uh, see the thing with dip and flip, like the burger is amazing, but the gravy makes it right. Yeah, but then the other one is there's Lucky Fox on here, which is Mike's talks about this all the time in Sheffield, okay. um, and that's on there, thirty six. Okay, um, so that's kind of how I know that I was like, okay, this is getting interesting now because I was like, I know some of these places and I've heard of some of them and they're really good. Almost famous in Leeds as well. I've heard that's good. Brother's in, brother goes to Leeds. Uh, he lives in Leeds and he's been there before. Said it's good. Um, I mean, anyone can back me up with these as well. Nottingham Annie's Burger Shack. Heard that's very good. Meat Liquor. Of course. On there. Um, Ooh. The, the one I didn't like that was on there was Owie Diner was 20th and I was like mm, that's not great that's so where Owie we went, Diner right? that's where we went for the yeah the ones that looked great but they weren't that great to eat though were they no um, so then this is where it gets interesting top 20 right Black Bear Burger 19th nice so Black Bear was there um, and then uh, where are we here Magu yeah, Diner 13th that. so that's the one we had where we had the um, why meat liquor leads I don't know. It just says Lee's on it, doesn't it? But, <laughs> so, Magu, so the one we had at Magu Diner was we had the um, we had the double patties and we had bacon, and then on top of that was lotus biscoff spread with Ew, pecan and butter, Correct. pecan nut butter. Um, so that was very very good. So yeah. then in the top ten, you've got Bleaker Burger at nine. Incredible. Yeah. Um, that, it is one of the best burgers. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care what Mike says either. He's wrong. Patty and bun was Patty fifth. Bun, a standard like. But I, I think so we because... did go to this one. We should have gone to Squeezed in Bristol. That's number four. I didn't know about that. Yeah, we know now. Um, there's a place in Hull. Hull? Uh, Hope Burger. Oh, Burger and Beyond, sorry, was second. Second. But, you know, Seven Bone Burger was Seven first. Bone. And that's the one that me and Mike went to post his show. Oh, really? And that is, that is, to be fair, very, very good. But I reckon those top ten, like, again, knowing that Bleak is in there, um, and knowing that Black Bear's down, like I said, 18th, and, and, and Magu's there at 13th, anything in the top 20 is going to be good. I, yeah. I guarantee that. Guarantee that. Um, so if any of you want that link, um, we in fact, we'll post it in the Facebook group probably, Tom. Yeah. I've tagged you in it, mate. Um, yeah, incredible list of places. And so I would hazard a guess if you live anywhere near any of those, um, oh. go to it, and I would imagine it would be one of the best burgers you've ever had because there are some legit choices on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if you're in London, it's Bleaker. There's a few of them. Black Bear is in Shoreditch. Uh, Dip and Flip. They're all south, which is really annoying. They need to venture to like Shoreditch or to Camden. Um, meat liquor, meat liquor, but there's also meat liquor, meat mission, meat market. They're all the same company. They all do the same burgers. Um, at Shoreditch, Oxford, near Oxford Street now. They've moved, um, mm. just off Regents. And wow. Bergen Beyond, Bergen Beyond is it's way more like fancy though. You have to yeah. sit down. It's really nice inside. And then order Tom Collins. Order the tater tots and then go to town on a burger oh yeah. they're hiring as well I might quit my job so this is the burger episode <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so yeah, uh, we went to we went to Magu Diner but that was the best one I've ever had because just because obviously like Bleaker and Black Bear are just good because you're just getting the bur- basically a cheeseburger and it's the quality of the burger that makes it whereas Magu was the quality of the burger but also the toppings as well like the Biscoff spread oh, oh no I came back raving about the uh the halloumi fries. Oh, the halloumi fries. I I, oh. I was I went straight on the on the first day when I got back. I was like, where do them in London? <laughs> it's They're limited like, places, and it's all yeah. vegan places. It's like the chili jam and the mint yogurt though together yeah. was just like. Mate, is, see the thing is, I know you're going to come back to Bath now, isn't me? <laughs> we don't have to go there. I didn't. I didn't think their. Uh, I don't know. Their serving manner was very great. They didn't want us in there, did they? They didn't want. <laughs> they wanted us to take it away. They really wanted us yeah, to do take away. Like, they were like, "We don't want to." Why do you want to sit here? It's like, I don't know. Cause I want yeah. to say have a burger. It was um, a bit odd. That was. But if anyone's ever in Bath, go to Magu Dino. It is very, very good. Or get, welcome, ta- or get, ta- or get takeout. Actually, yeah, get takeout because they won't want you. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's pretty strange. All right. Um, so yeah, twenty-five minutes in. Should we? Uh, let's start the show. Yeah, right. let's talk about some nutrition. Right? <laughs> so we got nutritiony, trainingy stuff. 
Um, so what you said something about Jordan Peters is going to start. So we're going to talk about breaking through breaking through plateaus. I guess is the theme of this episode, and it's the reason because Jordan Peters is a pretty advanced lifter. Savvy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. And he's decided to take it upon himself to go away from, I guess, traditional percentage-based programming. Is that what he's no, doing? No, he doesn't. He doesn't do percentage. He doesn't do percentage-based. He just does overload, like weight <laughs> load, overload every so, session. So he's not been tracking properly. And uh, he, he's the he, no, 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 no. His thing was that he tracks all his weights and everything, but he's okay. he constantly goes for the low volume, high intensity go to failure, lift as much load as possible, okay. where you can't increase the load, increase the reps, where you then increase the reps to a point, then increase so the load. He's, he's, yeah, so he goes for a direct linear progression of load, really. Yeah, and just, just flat out intensity, like direct two sets of, two sets of, of just load. fucking... So his graph hard. of just volume load should go up or just straight down, week by week. Should either be one of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so what he's going to go towards is a reps in reserve scale, which I hope it's something that we actually teach on our personal training level one course in uh, first base. So we're ahead of the game, of course. Yeah. Um, no, I just thought, I just thought it was funny because basically Jordan Peters has gone on. In, uh, I'm, I'm only 25 minutes into the, the podcast, I think. Um, but basically, Jordan Peters and Michael <laughs> got together. Well, that was random. Um, I know you are. I've got the time. No, no, I mean like the podcast that they did. Oh, right. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we are, yeah. Yeah, you're yeah, right. You're such a dick. <laughs> no, I'm in their podcast. I'm 20, oh, it's their like 25 podcast. minutes, another half an hour to go. But basically, yeah, but I also know podcast. kind of like from speaking to people what, what the conclusion is. Um, so basically, Mike Israel tells big on keeping reps in reserve, managing your fatigue, increasing volume, understanding where your maximal amount of volume you can recover from you know we talked about this last week on the or the mev and mrv and all, that, all these acronyms you only really need to worry about it if you're a bodybuilder but yeah. basically jordan peters just basically goes in the gym scares himself shitless with the weight he's got to lift lifts it and then next week beats it and then beats it and beats it and basically on the podcast he's basically said how he's running out of training partners because they just can't keep up with him because they like need to take months off because they just can't keep training that intensity and he's just even admits himself he's a little bit like tapped in the head really to be able to keep doing that um, but he's got to a point where he can't do it anymore. He can't keep increasing the load because he's just reached his max capacity to do that. Um, and basically, he's he's going to trial a reps in reserve based um, protocol from now on, I suppose, um, whereby he's going to manage his intensity of his lifts so that he can do a bit, bit more volume and that he can recover from them effectively and, and all this sort of stuff. Um, and I just thought it was funny. The reason I thought it'd be interesting to talk about it is because I know that a lot of bodybuilders basically do the whole well, Jordan Peters does it, so I'm going to do it. And they basically just train themselves within an inch of their life. Um, and they just keep pushing like intensity and they just talk about it. Low, low volume, high intensity, take it to failure, you know, crawl out of the gym kind of attitude to train him with the rationale of like, oh, well, Jordan Peters does it and he's big and amazing and all the top bodybuilders do it. So let's do that. Um, and basically, I think in this hour long podcast, basically, I think, John Peters Pierce have come around to the idea that actually potentially for where he's at the moment he's peaked and he's pretty he's plateaued and he needs to to try something different to overcome that plateau so that he can eventually lift um lift more and get bigger because that's his goal obviously just to get massively bigger. I just thought it was funny because I just imagine in a couple of months' time a lot of people who were just big train to failure copying John Peters on now be like oh yeah I'm gonna try reps and reserve now <laughs> just be like completely. <laughs> because he has you know what i mean like no 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 like regard for their own thoughts or their own feelings on the situation all that sort of stuff and it just I, I find that i can always talk about this sort of stuff or give a sort of an opinion because i'm not in either, either camp like our clients don't need to be in either our clients just need to get in and train train pretty hard most of them won't know where training to failure is anyway and if you give them a reps and reserve scale, they wouldn't they wouldn't train one rep in reserve. They'd train probably three reps in reserve. They would just leave a lot in the tank and they would sack it off. So, it, you know, it, there's it, there's so many variables to do with it and you have to understand where failure is. And in my mind, you have to want to be a top bodybuilder to understand both things, both training yeah. to failure and also reps reserve. You have to. Like, even now, I train to probably, like, if I'm being really honest, on a lot of my sets, between three and five reps in reserve. Like, I know I could do loads more. I just can't be bothered. But I know that I can also train within that amount and probably then not have to deload for six weeks because it's I've trained three times a week and all that sort of stuff. I mean, um, I'm that nerdy that, Dan, this is the 
transference scale of percentage base two reps and reserve that I always keep. I have a screenshot on my phone. Um, You're so cool, mate. I'm so cool. That's why. That's why you love me, mate. Um, but yeah, there's. If anybody's struggling, because I guess like uh, the traditional stuff is like, oh, you work to like it's like 100 percent, and then even 98 or 97 and a half percent, then 95, then 92, 93 percent, 91, 90 percent, based off how many you're meant to be lifting, right? So that there's like max exertion is like failure, and then you have got near max exertion in reps in reserve is like one to two. Um, and then hard exertion and medium hard exertion is the is a guy called M. Ladin Johanovic and I think it's Dan Baker who came up with it as well um, Dan Baker scale of reps and reserve pretty sure no idea no he's a yeah it is Dan Baker's load ex- if you want to look it up Dan Baker's load exertion table sounds really weird <laughs> um, yeah. but yeah you can kind of work out how many how much percentage say if you've got a one your one rep max is obviously going to be your 100%. So what Dan's saying is if you're training to, say, you train, you'd say three to four most of the time. Around there, yeah. Yeah, so three to four reps short is actually, it's a hard exertion, basically, yeah. is how you'd how you put it to. But say, if Dan, I don't know, repped out, what was it, like 80% of his one RM, He's going to be yeah, three, four reps short, like 81%, four, seven. So how many are going to be? About seven reps. You should be hitting. Two reps. Yeah, so if you're doing like a 10 RM, you should, you'll probably tap out at seven and be like, no, I can't do anymore. Yeah, probably. And, and I think that, like, it's, it's just, I just think the whole the whole thing is, it's just based around, like I said, how much you want to get results. And, and we did a YouTube video on it as well, like, where, we talked about it and there's actual research to show that you know a lot of people don't know with their rep maxes they don't understand that they've never been pushed to that level 100 percent, you don't need to like and you don't need, don't to, need no, to know of course you don't but then like, it's like you also don't need you don't then know your reps in reserve if you don't yeah. know where your true one rm is because like we found with calculations before you can do your 10 rm but it doesn't equal your one rm as so a percentage because we've done it previously right we've we've based off so maybe maximally 100% because of the way myself and Dan have trained each other through the, the last five, six years. Um, you can rep out at a lower weight, say you're 80%, far more than I can. You will absolutely butcher me by about three, four, five reps at mm. what would be that weight. But maybe the absolute, if we were doing ones and twos, I would probably find more comfortable. Yeah. And be yeah. like, I can do that, I can do that. That's fine. Yeah, and... and, and- and I think like with the YouTube video, like Mike talked about the research as well, and there's actually some research to show that they basically got a bunch of participants and said, right, you know, put your 10 rep max on that bar, and then I want you to squat with it, or whatever it was, back squat, whatever. I don't know the exact details, but... <laughs> back squat, that's tricky terminology there, mate. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so, like, so like, let's say they, they did 10 RM, and basically what they did, well, it might have been bench press, actually, I think it was, 10 RM. So they said, right, pick your 10 RM, put it on there, and then just rep it out as many reps as you can to failure. And there were some people that got like over like 18, 19, 20. Yeah. And some of them were actually training more reps in reserve than they actually were selecting on the bar. So they said 10 RM. Some of them went over 20. So that's like you're not even training effectively. You're not even training like as, the, as that scale goes. Um, and these are people that have maybe been training for a year or two or whatever. And I just think that a lot of the time people don't know where where their limits are. So that's where the, the reps and reserve, reserve scale kind of falls down. I think a lot of people could actually train or probably do train the majority of the time, probably within the three to six reps and reserve range and still get good results. Yeah. Pretty, pretty much. You don't have to train to failure. And all the, all the guys that do train to failure get incredible results because they, they eat, live, and, and breathe bodybuilding. So they, they know how to recover and do all those sorts of things. But um, I just thought it was interesting because I think, you know, in terms of overcoming plateaus, for example, you want to talk about, but from my point of view, it's just funny because I think a lot of people now will just be like, oh, well, you know, I'll just change my philosophy as well then without actually having any thought behind it. Like, it's not – like, that argument isn't going to change anything that I think about training. Like, yeah. without sounding like a like a douchebag or a dickhead, I don't – that I didn't learn anything from watching that or, or, or understand that because, again, for my demographic, I don't fall in one camp or the other where it's 100% has to be that. I, like, I'm not there. I'm not that demographic where I don't need to worry about that and sit in – and like be like that's the way to go about it there are some of my clients that I have to stop them training so hard and there are some clients that have to push to train harder that's pretty much it for me <laughs> like I don't have to stress too much about it um, I'd say the, the scales that we would generally use like RPEs are easy to 
understand for less developed lifters because it's just a one to ten scale of like oh how hard you feel that was um, if you relate it to how you did it previously but they mm. have to have done it previously so and then obviously so you got RPE scales is what uh, reps and reserve scales should replace if you're if you become more advanced and then you can also track your lift better um, and then the traditional percentage scales I still like using them it's probably just the traditional SNC coaching me that I'm like all right that's how that you should be hitting this many reps or that's how mm. my like my wave of linear progression is going to happen or however my overload is going to be so I can be like all right week one's there week two's heavy week three's light week four's heavy and I can use my percentages based off that um, I would find it tough to know the intensity especially if I've got the numbers in front of me and I kind of know that person what they should be hitting um, but I might write a plus or minus like one two percent on the bar because I don't know what that person's feeling like that day so that might be yeah. on that particular day their their one RM is actually 102 percent of it um, of whatever their seven R and R is probably just it's, it sounded like a different language what I just spoke to some of the people I've heard, but <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's, that's what you got sometimes got to like make the call especially in one to one coaching I probably make that call nearly every single day of depending on how that person's feeling um, so like today one of my lads just wanted he literally just wanted to sit and chat for 25 minutes about mm. all stuff in, going on in his life um, just because trust me so and that was about it and I ramped his session right down we did fuck all nothing's going on we were we were at 60% and that was like 20 rep max stuff so mm. if, you're, if you're lifting at 60% of your rep max that's about 20 20 reps um, but yeah it was strange but breaking through plateaus Dan is stuff that we've discussed before I've delivered some sort of talk on this previously because it's just certain variances of exercises and stuff that you can start to do but maybe if we were to say we were sticking with the same exercise what we could manipulate within that so if we were just doing like let's go bog standard deadlift stuff or bench pressing everybody wants to get a big bench press right Mm. Oh yeah, that was after training with Dan, my triceps have never been sore. Like, <laughs> I clearly do no direct such triceps a pussy, mate. at all. You're such a pussy. Why are you pussy? Dan didn't want to do fucking leg extensions. Don't need to do them, mate. I've got shorts on. <laughs> shorts cover my quads. I don't know what you're on about, mate. Unnecessary. We'd already done flipping legs as well. I know it was great. We did ridiculous. Dan did back squats. I did front squats. Then we did the vertical leg press. as a thing of beauty. Yeah, so why do we ever need to do more quads then? I'm then I was like, I want to do more quads. <laughs> I felt like, because we'd done so much, we did just push pull, didn't we, on the, the day before. And then we went and did two, we did, yeah, we did push pull again, didn't we? But we did push pull pull. Because I had the uh, idea, of was like, I want a horizontal supersetted with a vertical. Crazy. We took up two machines at the same time. Taboo that. Uh, crazy, mate. I know, it was pretty crazy. Pretty good though. I did. Uh, I did enjoy it because I don't. I don't machine based train very much, and then probably when I'm with you, I do. It's just, yeah, you realise how cool they are. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I don't have to do anything. It's great. Yeah, it's, it's a lot easier to set up for nothing yeah. like that. <laughs> but no, that you're right. That vertical leg press is very, very nice. Though. It's an absolute dream. So if anybody that has, uh, guess, uh, psoas tendon clicking for. A, the lack of a better word. Sorry, that's 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 old man hips like Tom. Old man hips like me. Yep. Um, so there's there's a condition condition. There's a there's your psoas tendon goes pretty much near over your hip capsule. So it, it's that it gives a kind of it's not painful, but it's a like poppy clicky sound maybe when either you go through squatting or you like you. you um, but what's really common is uh, if you're in a dead bug position, and then gravity takes it down. If you're pushing your leg back down into a de from a dead position and it clicks over your hip it's not painful it's just weird um, but it also can happen when you're doing that same motion within squatting or whatever so what I wanted to try because I was convinced that gravity would have an effect on it and it did I was when I was lying on my back because of where the gravity would sit and push uh, the tendon over my capsule so it'd be and my capsule would be like my socket would be further into my hip and would I have any pain or any uncomfortableness? And I didn't, Dan. And it was amazing. You didn't, did you? That's no, why you loved it so that's much. That's why I loved it so much. And that's why I sent a picture to my uh, fitness director straight away and was like, 
Can we get one of these in the next? We month? need one of these now. <laughs> it would really help everyone in the gym. Everyone really wants it. FYI, oh, whichever gym it goes in, can I move there? Um, yeah. Because that's all I'm using. <laughs> Legs are done. Like, that's all I have to do. I'll be on there all the time. Superb. Loved it. Um, but good work. Vertical leg press, way forward. Obviously, people need to learn how to use it. Uh, don't let it fall on you. Was is a little bit scary, I guess. Uh, yeah, good advice, that, isn't it, man? <laughs> <laughs> it's sound advice, but yeah. Um, so we'll take a bench press, right? Um, what are some strategies that have you you have used? I guess we can talk pauses, speed, tempos, all that kind of crap. Yeah, so we'll obviously we'll talk about deadlift, I suppose. Did we, did we say we're going to talk about deadlift? Like deadlift or bench press? Which one one's more interesting? Well, um, Those I are the ones we care about. I mean, with deadlifts, you could do like pauses. So you could do your last like lighter weight. You can do pause just below the knee. You could do stuff like that. You can do, um, you could vary the depth which you deadlifted from. You could do from a block, for example. You could do not like a rack pull. That's probably a different movement altogether, but certainly raise it slightly. The floor, FYI, can, people doing like one or M's on rack pulls, lamest thing ever. Yeah, no Lame, just don't do it. Um, <laughs> You could then do like speed deadlifts, so you could lower the weight a lot and you focus on rate of force development that you're trying to do. Um, mm. about, yeah, I mean, is that, that, is that talking about strength speed or speed strength then? Oh, don't start with that. <laughs> um, I don't think what else you could do. You could vary, you could do like sumo deadlifts. You could change your foot position, your stance a little bit. Um, still train that movement. Um, so there are things you could do straight off the bat that would change the, the weight you're lifting the rep schemes you might choose you decide to do um, so yeah that's that basically I think those are, those, those are the things if somebody's struggling with a plateau certainly with one lift I think yeah changing like a foot position or a hand position turning like bench pressing into like maybe you just close grip or and close grip does not mean you have to go super 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 tight my, my version of just close grip is either a half or a whole hand in from your normal position um, yeah that's actually fine Crazy people just like, I'm gonna put it right next to my head. And you're like, that's, that's gonna be really good on your shoulder. Really, yeah. really good. Um, you've got pain. All right, wonderful. Good, good work. It's gonna hurt, yeah. It's gonna hurt. Um, but pause work. So, yeah, and people were like, yeah, Dan just said you can pause below the knee. You can pause wherever the hell you want to. Yeah. Um, the most common one is pause below the knee. It's pause below knee, or I like using a pause like two centimeters off the floor. So, you just take the click out of the bar and then you're like hovering. And then you lift, um, quite yeah. like that. And the pause can be for however long you want to do as well. I would within deadlifting, if you're holding it for more than five seconds, then uh, get a life. Um, apart from that, tempo work. I guess that's eccentric tempo work, or you can do just concentric phases within deadlifts. I would be quite happy programming those in. So you just lift up, drop down, lift up, drop down. You won't get sore as well, which is great. Um, mm. <laughs> most people do just drop down. I think now, without the, it's been a it's been to be a whenever we probably did our S and C or our, our teach backs, we probably have like slow eccentric phase, controlled eccentric phase. No, believe it or not, you can just drop it. Um, yeah, it's absolutely fun. <laughs> speed work, yeah. There's like super light speed work, which is speed strength, and then uh, slightly heavier stuff, which is up to like sixty percent. Up to sixty percent is strength speed. Up to thirty. 35 to 40 percent is the speed strength. Sorry, not strength speed. Confusing myself then. What about the bit in the middle of that though? Well, that's where you get it. from 45 to 60 percent is strength speed, and then from body weight to 45 percent would be speed strength because you're moving fast. And as soon as you lose velocity and you feel like you're moving velocity, fuck it off. Don't do any more. There you go. There you go. If you if you think you're repping it out, it's just hypertrophy, mate. So fuck off. Yeah, don't bother. <laughs> don't bother. If it gets above six, yeah, we'll jog on. You're not moving very quickly anymore. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, which people suffer with, like, oh, I'm going to do ten reps of these speed work. What ten reps? Yeah, all right, good luck. Um, you ain't going to be moving quick but after ten reps. Far too long. Far too long. ATP's is, gone down. ATP's gone. You hate all that shit, don't you? I do because hate you, that shit. You hate when you see people doing all that sort of stuff. It's <laughs> bad. Because they're no longer moving quickly, so they've lost the emphasis of what they're trying to do, and you're no longer breaking plateaus. You're doing muscular endurance. Good work. Right, Tom. You're so right. <laughs> you're so right. <laughs> but yeah, that is, that's the kind of stuff I would start to do. And if you want to really learn about it, then uh, talk to Dan, not me. 
Don't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I've just written a list of I, or I've, I've something that uh, was a slightly bugbear of mine, um, but I don't want to talk about. Is squeezing dumbbells really hard and realizing that you don't always have to train the grip and like mm. bandy work and kind of pulls and stuff. I would quite happily just kind of lightly hold and actually try and feel my back in like banded pull aparts and stuff like that. Really annoyed yeah. me this week, but yeah. I don't know why people are like gripping the shit out or something and they're like sparked up all the way down there their forearm what are you training chest all right good work all right. All right, cool. really annoys you doesn't it yeah. <laughs> see that in you mate flipping out all right mate um all right let's play a game of favorites now i've written down three things nutritionally and three things uh training wise give us your favorite because you're a trainer come on man. right favorite mobility drill dan go Oof. Uh, uh, you don't do them, so... I do like... <laughs> what was Dan's warm-up? I Spider- do like a Spider-Man lunge into a reach Spider-Man overhead. Spider-Man lunge. Yeah, that's quite a good one. Or a um, like a sumo squat with your toes under your with your fingers under your toes and then reaching up one at a time as well. I like that. It's quite good. I like that. I do... I like mainly doing like thoracic-y rotational stuff. So like rib grab, lying down, flash it rotation look that up with with some crocodile breathing best thing in the world um, favourite squat regression ooh goblet squat I love a goblet, goblet squat I, I'm going to concur either goblet squat or landmine goblet loaded so, oh there's a shock because <laughs> like the angle of attack is like awesome you're like yeah, straight goblet. that way I like, I like the goblet goblet squatters are great they're just un, well, they're, oh, I feel like they're sometimes overused in uh in PT, maybe, but underused in your own training, if you get what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very, it's kind of very easy exercise to program for when you're training a client, and probably good, probably great for them. Um, but when you're training yourself, it's very rare that I'm there, I don't know, writing goblet squats most of the time. Um, but you're like, ah, it's a regression. It's like one of the easiest squats you can do. Yeah, but if you load it to hell, mm. it's pretty decent. Um, Right. An exercise you cannot do without. Lap pull down. I just love a lap pull down. Lap pull down. You do love a lap pull down. I do right? really like a lap pull down. I think it's an exercise that once you really feel and you know that you're doing it properly, I just love the feeling of it. Like nothing. I think there's no, there's no better feeling than when you can really fully contract your lap. And once you know how to do it and you can do it, it's like a feeling you just don't ever want to lose. <laughs> I don't know why. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go with another row as well because I, I quite like kind of a low seated row and I'd go single arm as well without rotation or with rotation. Maybe with. With a yeah, very nice. controlled right. rotation. A low seated row on a mm. cable. Yeah. Yep. Beautiful. All right, nutrition. 300 calorie meal. Oh, fucking hell. That's a good one. Um, pretty, pretty standard for kind of weight lossy stuff. 300 calories, nice ballpark. I'm going to leave this one to you because I wouldn't really know. I'd be like, 300 uh, calorie meal. Biscoff probably... ice cream is 300 calories. Yeah, that's, yeah that's, <laughs> I mean, that's what I would get. If I only had 300 calories left to eat, that's what I would have. Um, I would say probably be a. Oh, that's a tough one, mate. Without. Probably be like an egg white omelette with. Um, an egg white omelette with eat lean cheese, some chorizo crumb to add a bit of flavour to it. Ooh. Um, yeah, probably that with a bagel. Nice. That would be about 300 calories, I reckon. Full bagel? Bagel, bagel thin. Bagel thin, yeah. If anyone would know what those are, they're game changers. I think that's what I'd have. Decent, mate. Favourite mass meal? Ooh. So I tell you what I do be, really like. That'd be like quite... 750 calories up. I don't. I do like that. It's really quite dense in calories and very easy to cook and eat. It's knocky, very, very good. Because you mix in a bit of pesto with that straight away with calories and that. Um, but I would have to say it would be bacon, poached egg, avocado on bagel. I think because that would be about seven hundred fifty calories. I, mean, I am yeah. I'm a full advocate of Brinner, and I will have Brinner most of the time. Yeah, it's unreal. I'd go that, yeah, 100%. I could have breakfast every meal of the day. Yeah, I, yeah same. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, right. Last one. Favourite thing to cure a sugar craving? 
that isn't well I don't know it would be sugar based sugar. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do I do like jelly when I'm dieting yeah okay, um, that, that was the angle I was going for dieting based not just yeah diet yeah, yeah. Be, on yeah, mass it would be like uh, yeah I'm just gonna <laughs> just eat jelly is probably the thing um I'm trying to think like diet beverages don't really they're, yeah they're nice but I mean they're nice but I day. just have them all the time yeah, so. uh, but then again a twister's pretty good 40 calories for a mini twister I mean that's pretty decent isn't it I would tend to go towards some sort of ice cream based stuff the little kind things I think, are only about I think 60 the thing, I think the thing you're missing here Tom is that the, that the actual answers were and for number one was Biscoff ice cream for number two was three Biscoff ice creams <laughs> and this one is Biscoff ice cream <laughs> so do you think that's sponsorous I think so uh, they better do just, just send us some stuff it'll be fine just send us some stuff <laughs> alright mate um, I think that'll wrap up favourites wrap up the show I'm going 50 minutes and we, do, we spent half of it talking about fitness maybe it's maybe probably what they, debatable, probably what debatable wants. as well so <laughs> alright any other business no other business for me no very true we should probably get a guest on at some point because uh, I think we've just been hogging the limelight um, but yeah anybody we want to think about getting on Maybe. Maybe a new LinkedIn friend. Be great. Yeah, your new LinkedIn friend. Yeah. That might work. That'd be hilarious, wouldn't it? That, 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 that'd be somebody, some, some people would listen to it, 100%. Uh, <laughs> Dan wouldn't know. I wouldn't. Well, I'd be, you'd have to do it with Josh that day, yeah, I uh, Probably. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, go eat those burgers. If anybody like goes and has one of those burgers this week, um, tell us, because they probably want to see a picture of the real thing. Um, incredible alright and we will uh, catch you next week catch you later